Hi, this is Jim Clary, and welcome to AirModTraining.com. In this video, Sarah will explain to you and describe a program that we have developed and are offering free of charge that allows one to create a receptor grid for AirMod. This will be of most use probably to our more experienced users to begin with, but you folks that are beginning your path, uh, your travels down the AirMod path, um, this may also become of interest to you certainly after you've looked at some of our other videos. Anyway, I'll turn it over to Sarah and enjoy the show. Thank you. I'm Sarah Weaver with AirModTraining.com. I'm going to show you how to use AirGrid to generate a receptor network for AirMod modeling in this video. A receptor network typically contains multiple grids. The receptor locations in each grid are based on either a Cartesian or polar coordinate system. Receptors in a Cartesian coordinate system form a rectangular grid, and receptors in a polar coordinate system are placed on radials extending from a source, forming concentric rings around that source. For example, assume the Cartesian grid to the left is 5 by 5 kilometers. That means each receptor is 1 kilometer away from the next receptor in the x and y directions. The polar grid on the right has radials every 45 degrees, and the receptors are spaced one kilometer apart on each radial. As the receptors get further away from the source, the distance to the next receptor on each ring gets larger and larger. For that reason, polar grids are used less often than Cartesian grids, so we are going to focus on Cartesian grids in the rest of this video. The number and density of receptors is determined on a case-specific basis and can vary from state to state. You will need to check with your reviewing agency's modeling guidance for receptor spacing requirements. However, the receptor spacing of each grid typically increases as you move further from the source and the receptor locations are listed in UTM coordinates. And there are a few special considerations to take into account when building a receptor network. If a fence or wall restricts public access to your property, on-property receptors are removed and property line receptors are added to the receptor network. Sources impacted by downwash may require large dense grids and isolated dense grids may be needed to locate areas of maximum impacts. So this is a typical receptor network. The property line is outlined in red and the four other grids are outlined in blue. I'm going to turn on the receptor locations which are represented by blue dots, and there are actually 8,949 receptors in this receptor network. Zooming into the property line, you will see there are no receptors within the property line boundary. And we have 25 meter spaced receptors along the property line. So zooming out to see the first grid, this is a dense grid with a 50 meter spacing and it extends out from the sources to one kilometer. So the second grid is a fine grid and the receptors are spaced 100 meters apart and this one extends from the sources out to three kilometers. The third grid is a medium grid. This has a 500 meter spacing and it extends from the sources out to 10 kilometers. And then the last grid is a coarse grid. This one has a spacing of two kilometers and it extends from the sources out to the maximum allowed range of 50 kilometers. It can be difficult and time consuming to calculate the location of hundreds, even thousands of receptors in the format needed for input into AirMod or AirMap. And removing on-property receptors and adding property line receptors makes it even more difficult. And AirMap and AirMod have keywords that are used to generate gridded receptors, but this option does not remove duplicate receptors from overlapping grids. And there is no option for removing on-property receptors or adding property line receptors. So to remove the complexity of creating the receptor network, we created a program called AirGrid 
that will generate a Cartesian grid receptor network and remove any areas of overlapping grid. With AirGrid, you'll have the ability to generate multiple grids, and for each grid, you define the grid size and location and the receptor spacing. You can define the property line, which will remove on-property receptors, and you can add property and you can add receptors along the property line and define source locations. And finally, you can view the grid boundaries, source locations, and receptor locations with Google Earth. And to make things even easier, the air grid output is ready for input into AirMap or AirMod. And you can download the Windows executable and README file from airmodtraining.com. This is an example input file for AirGrid. The file name, is exparams.txt, and the parameters defined here are for a fictional facility located within the boundary of the Yellowstone National Park, and all information is listed in the README file. The first section defines the center point of the project, and it's a mandatory input. This line starts with PT in the first two spaces, followed by the UTM coordinates and then the UTM zone. The second section defines the stack names and locations. This is optional and is really only needed to plot the stack locations in Google Earth. So these lines start with SO in the first two spaces, followed by the stack name that can be a maximum of eight characters, and then you have the UTM coordinates. The third section defines the property line, which is a mandatory input. This line starts with PL, followed by the property line file. If there is no property line, Enter the word none in all caps in place of the file name. This file can have any name and extension, but it needs to be in BLN format. This is the format of the property line BLN file. In this case, it's basically a delimited text file. You can use spaces or commas here, but note that you can't use comment lines in this file. In the first line, enter the number of coordinates followed by the UTM zone. Then list the coordinates that define the property line. And the property line should form a closed loop, so ensure that the first coordinate is repeated at the end. In this example, the property line is a triangle, so four coordinates are listed, and the UTM zone is 12. Going back to the air grid input file, the fourth section defines the grids. List the property line receptor grid first, then list the grids in increasing order of grid width and receptor spacing. RE is required in the first two spaces, followed by the grid name and the grid name can have a maximum of eight characters. Next, you list the grid type, receptor spacing, width and length, and the grid center point. The property line receptors must have a grid name that starts with capital P, and this is grid type A and does not require a width, length, or center point. The spacing defines the distance between each receptor along the property line, and if you don't want receptors along the property line, just omit this line. Other gridded receptors must have a grid name that starts with capital G. These are grid type B and require receptor spacing, width and length, and a center point. Now the receptor spacing will typically be a multiple of five and it's best to ensure the width and length are both divisible by this number. The width is the total east-west grid width in meters and the length is the total north-south grid length in meters and the center point will typically match the center point listed above. And this is the point from which all receptor locations will be calculated, so we suggest rounding the center point to the nearest 10 meters. In this case, the center points of grids two and three match the facility center point listed above, while grid one here is shifted to the northeast. To run AirGrid, download the executable from airmodtraining.com. And please note that since this is a free program, we do not offer technical support for running AirGrid. So you can see here, I saved the executable in the same folder that I have my parameter file and the property line file. Uh, so I will open a command window and you will see if you only type the program name, you will see how to use it and enter the program in the command line. You will also see an example parameter file, and then you'll also see an example property line file. So to run the program, you type air grid, and then the parameter file name, followed by the site name. So the program prints out how many receptor grids 
and how many point sources were processed and the total number of receptors in this command window. And over here, going back to our folder, you can see an XY file and a KML file were created. And both file names start with your site name that was entered in the command line window. So the XY file here, this is a file that can be directly input into AirMap or AirMod. And the receptors are listed by grid, and comment lines here start with two asterisks. And then the RE discard options, they're variables required by AirMap, AirMap and AirMod. And more details on that will be available in our AirMap training video. So closing that, when you open the KML file in Google Earth, like our previous example, you will see the grid boundaries in blue and the property line in red. And here we also have the stack locations marked by a red target, and they're also labeled with the stack name defined in the property file. So over here on the left, if you expand the folder, you'll see that the rec locations folder is unchecked. Uh, checking this box allows you to see the actual receptor locations and you can compare the different grid and just determine if there's any adjustments to the receptor spacing that need to be made. That concludes our demonstration on how to use AirGrid to generate a receptor network for AirMod modeling. If you run into any problems setting up AirGrid or have any other problems with your AirMod project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase at airmodtraining.com. And during our session, you'll be able to ask any question related to your AirMod modeling project. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.